Hello everyone and welcome back. Till today, we have been working with Data Engineering Persona on our Databricks platform. We have seen a lot of stuff about Data Engineering. Today, we are going to discuss about the Data Analyst Persona. We are going to discuss about DB SQL, which stands for Databricks SQL and SQL Warehouses. Now, you might have seen that we are using SQL throughout the Databricks platform, whether it is providing permissions on Unity Catalog or working with autoloaders or DLT pipelines. So you can go ahead and use SQL throughout the Databricks platform. It is ANSI compliant and is available throughout the platform to work with, which makes our life a lot easier. Today, we are also going to discuss about SQL warehouses. Now, if you remember, Databricks is built on top of Lakehouse. Now, Lakehouse enables you to use warehousing on the same platform with the help of Delta Lake. And today we are going to see all of this with demo. We are going to understand some benefits of using warehouses on Databricks and we are going to see what all options are available for you. Now, it is very difficult to cover DB SQL and warehouses in a single video, but I'll try my best to get you started with it. Now, I'm not going to cover the whole DB SQL in this video. There are SQL language references that you can find in the Databricks documentation. You can go ahead and check out this page in order to get all the SQL references that are available within Databricks. Next, in order to start with warehouses, we first need to understand the type of warehouses that are available with Databricks. There are basically three types of warehouses that are available with Databricks. The first one is serverless, the second one is pro, and the third one is classic. You can go ahead and see all the benefits mentioned in this table here in this documentation. With serverless, you get all the features like Photon Engine, Predictive I.O., and Intelligent Workload Management. But with Pro and Classic, there are limited functionalities available. Again, serverless here is the best option because it provides you to work with Intelligent Workload Management, which enhances your query and reduces your cost. Okay. Now, with Predictive I.O., you get enhancement in the scanning that has been done to read the data. And with Photon Engine, you get a vectorized query engine which enhances the performance of your SQL and data frame APIs. Now, today we are going to use the serverless warehouse type. We have already discussed about serverless in our previous video. You can go ahead and watch that video as well. Now, with SQL warehouses, you get concurrency in your SQL queries and also it enhances the performance of analytical queries. Today, we are going to see all of this with demo. So without any further delay, let's begin. I am back in my Databricks workspace. I am logged in with Ease Data User, which is a workspace admin user and also a Metastore admin user. Now, on the left hand side, you can see the SQL features are now enabled for me. Because I am a workspace admin, I have access to it. This is why you can see this option. Now, if you don't have this option enabled for you, you can go ahead and check out with your admin. Again, there are some permissions required for it. If you don't know about it, go ahead and check out this video. Now, we have already worked with notebooks from the beginning, right? You can go ahead and run your SQL queries in notebook as well. But today we are going to use SQL editor. Okay. So if I click on the SQL editor, if I click on the SQL query, you get a nice SQL editor in order to write SQL queries. So let me just close this on the left hand side and let me just expand this a little. Okay. So this is our SQL editor that you can go ahead and write your SQL queries. Even you can save your SQL queries to run it again or even schedule it. Okay, now before we can go ahead and use SQL editor in order to run queries, first we need to create a warehouse, right? So let me just quickly switch tab and now I'll go to compute on the left hand side. Okay, now once I am on this compute page, if I click on SQL warehouse, you see Databricks provides us with the default option to get a serverless starter warehouse. Okay, but I'm going to create a warehouse from scratch. So I'm going to create on this button which says create SQL warehouse. Once I do this, I get a lot of options. The first option is to write a name of the warehouse. So I'm just going to provide warehouse as the name. Okay. Now the next is the cluster size. Okay. So just to keep in mind that if you want to run concurrent queries, you need clusters. Okay. And SQL warehouses provides you a feature to run concurrent queries. So this option allows you to select the size of your cluster. And I'm going to use the smallest one, which says 2x small which gives me a charge of 4 dBu per hour. So I'm just going to select this. And now it gives you an option for auto stop. I'll let it be 10 minutes, okay? The next is the scaling option. The scaling options allows you to scale up your cluster. It means to add more number of clusters to your warehouse so that you can run more and more concurrent queries and your queries does not get queued up, okay? For now, I'll let the minimum and the maximum number be one, okay? Next is the type of warehouse. Now you get options like serverless pro and classic. We have already discussed the differences among them. 
With Pro and Classic, if you spin up a warehouse, the clusters are created within your infrastructure. With serverless, this is all managed by Databricks. So I'll let it be serverless, okay? If I click on this advanced option, you get tags. And if you notice here, Unity Catalog is by default enabled for your warehouse. Again, the channel, I'll let it be current, okay? So this is all you need to define for warehouse. There is no complex setup, nothing. This is as simple as that. Just click on create now. Once I do that, it gives me an option to manage permission. Ease with data user is the owner. I'll let it be and I'll just close this up. Okay. Now you get three tabs here. Overview gives you information about the cluster that you have created. Now, if I go to connection details, you get the information about the host name, HTTP path and the JDBC URL, which would be required in order to connect with BI tools. For example, if you want to connect this with Power BI, you can just go ahead and click on this. It will provide you the information that is required in order to connect with Power BI. Okay. Similarly, for other tools, for example, if you want to connect it with Tableau, you can go ahead and click on this. You can download the credential file and you can use that in order to connect this warehouse with Tableau. Okay. Then you can go ahead and run your visualizations or your analytical queries on Tableau. And that would be powered by this SQL warehouse. And that would use Unity Catalog as governance. And that would consume the data from your lake house. Okay, so this is how you can go ahead and use your warehouse in order to connect with different BI tools. Okay, the next tab is the most important one, which provides you a lot of information about the queries that you are running. It gives you information about the number of running queries, the queued queries, and the number of clusters that has been spinned up for your warehouse. Again, if you scroll down, you'll find the query history of all the queries that has run on this warehouse. And even you can go ahead and see the performance of those queries through this monitoring. Let me quickly switch back to the SQL editor that we had opened previously. Great. I'm back in my SQL editor. Now I'm going to name this query. Okay. I'm just going to name this as. Okay. So we are going to write a query in order to join a customer table and an orders table and get the information about the total price, total orders based on market segment. Okay. Now I need to select the warehouse that I've just created. So I'm just going to click on this connect and you can see the warehouse here. I'm just going to select this. Great, my warehouse is now available in order to use with this SQL editor. Okay, so if I expand on the left hand side, you can see dev, I'll expand further ETL and I expand further the tables. Now, these are all the tables that we created when we learned DLT, right? We are going to use order server. So I'll just click on this arrow here. It will insert the name of the table. Okay, so I'll write select star from. Okay, next I'll hit enter and I'll alias this as O. Okay. And next we'll do left join. So I'll just write left join with the customer to SCD table. Okay. So this was the SCD type 2 table that we created for customers. So I'll just click on this arrow. And now you can see the ease how I can insert the table names, right? So I'll just write C. Okay. And now I'll hit enter. Now I'll write the join condition which is on O dot. And I'll expand this tables in order to get the column name. So I'll expand the order silver first. I'll click on this arrow again to insert the column name which is O dot cust key. Then write equals to and I'll insert the name of the customer column, which is C cust key. Okay. I'll just alias is at C dot cust key. Okay. Now I'll put a where condition. Now, since our customer table is a SCD type 2 table, so we only need to get the active records, right? So I'll just insert one more row, which is end at. Okay. So alias this as C dot end at. And I'll set it as null. Okay. If this is null, it implies the record is active. We have already discussed this in our DLT sessions. So if you don't know about it, go ahead and check out that session first. Okay. Now, we have joined both the tables. This would give us all the records. Let's go ahead and get only the market segment record. So I'll just write C dot and I'll get the market segment column here. So which is C market segment. And again, I'm going to do a count on the number of orders so i'll just click on this order key okay so i'll just alias this is o dot order key and i'll write total orders here okay and now if you see our query is ready we are going to get the total number of orders based on market segment and we are going to join two tables which are orders and customer one thing that we missed is the group by so i'll just write group by and we are going to group by this based on market segment so i'll select this i'll paste it here okay now our query is ready. So I'm going to select this whole query. And now if I select this, you can see I can go ahead and select the selected query. Else we can go ahead and run all the queries in this editor. So since we have only one query, I'm just going to click on run all. So as soon as I do that, you can see here it shows me C performance. Output is ready here. Now I'll quickly switch back to the warehouse. And if I refresh here, 
Now, if I scroll down, you can see a lot of queries executed. Some of them are by default executed by Databricks, but we don't need to worry about it. The importance is of this query that we have just run. So if I hover over it, you can go ahead and see the query here. So if I click on this, you can go ahead and see the query that we have run. So I'll just click on this now. Now you can see more details about this query. So if I scroll down, you can see the number of rows that has been read for this query, the size of the data. If I scroll down, you can even see the number of files. Okay. Now, if you want to debug further, you can go ahead and click on this query profile. So once I click on this, you can go ahead and see how this has been joined. So if I scroll down here, you can see how this has been joined. So you can see here the table which was for orders. Here is the table for customer. There is a shuffle step happening. And then if I scroll up, you can see the left join and then filter and then grouping. And in the end, we are getting the data here, right? So if I scroll further up, you can see here we are getting data. Now, this is the time spent. So if you see, it gives us the time required for each of the step that has happened. So if I scroll down, you can see the majority of time has been taken to scan the data for orders, right? 6.59 seconds. Now, if you want to see the number of rows, just go ahead and click on this rows. So once I do that, you see the number of rows that is flowing. You can see 7.51 million rows flowing and here 750k records has been flowing. So if I expand this further, you can see it here, right? So if I scroll up, you can see how this is doing. Once the left join happens, still there are 7.51 million records, right? So there is no cross joining happening. Again, if I scroll up, you can see here it is only taking 60 records now. If I scroll up further, in the end, we are getting five rows. Similarly, you can see the details about memories as well. So if I click on this, you can see how much memory has been taken to read which step, right? For grouping aggregate, it is taking 120 MBA memory. And if I scroll further down, you can see it is taking 111 MB in order to read the orders table, 35 MB in order to read the boots. Okay, so you get a lot of detail about the query when you see the query profile. Even you can debug further, you can go ahead and see what has happened when it was executed on the cluster. You can go ahead and see the Spark UI logs as well. So if you click on this three dot on the top, you can go ahead and see open in Spark UI. So if I click on this, you can further get the DAG that has been executed. So if I scroll down here, you can see the complete DAG that has been executed on the cluster. Okay. Now you can further expand each of the step in order to get more detail about the execution. Now, if you see this whole yellow block, this whole yellow block has been executed on the Photon Engine. So once the query is executed on Photon Engine, it gets enhanced, okay? Your cost gets reduced and the query performance increases. So the more yellow, the more better, okay? So if I scroll down, now you can see more information about this in the Spark UI. So now you understand how you can write your query, how you can debug your query further, and how you can get more information about the query performance using Spark UI. So let me just quickly go back to Warehouse. And let me just close this now. So now if you see, you can go ahead and find whole query history that has happened. You can see in the monitoring tab, how many queries are running, how many queries are queued. Even you can go ahead and see the whole query history. So if you click on this three dots, if you click on query history, you can see all of the queries that has been executed on this warehouse. Some of the queries are by default, which has been triggered by Databricks for some metadata, but you can go ahead and check the queries that you have triggered for this warehouse. Great. Now you know how to debug this query for performance. Let's go ahead and save this query. So I'll just click on the save button here. Once I do this, this query is saved. Okay. So now we can go ahead and schedule this query. If you want to rerun this query again and again, you can go ahead and click on the schedule. So now you can go ahead and schedule your query as per your requirement and you can get the updated data every time the scheduled query runs. Okay. And it is going to use the same circle warehouse that you select here as an option. Okay. I'm just going to click on cancel. And now I'm going to expand the left hand side. And if I go to queries here, you can go ahead and see your query that you have saved right now. You can go back to this query if you want to edit. Even you can go ahead and see the data. It has refreshed. For example, you can go ahead and see the data here. Okay. Now, the best part is, let me just click on the left hand side. Let me expand it a bit in the top. You can go ahead and create a visualization of this query. If you click on this plus button, you can go ahead and create visualization. Just click on this. And now you can select the type of visualization that is required. For example, let's go ahead and create a bar graph of the data. So if you see, it is by default selecting the market segment as X column and Y column is total orders. Since our data is already grouped by, I'm not using a group by column. I'll just click on save. And you can go ahead and save a visualization as well for your query in the same query. Okay, you can go ahead and see the information about the visualization. Now you can even run SQL warehouse queries in your notebooks. So let me just go ahead and copy this whole query again. And what I'll do is I'll expand on the left hand side. I'll click on workspace. Okay, I'll just name it as SQL query. 
and I'm going to paste the query here. Okay. Now I'm going to select warehouse here. Now, once you select warehouse, you can only run SQL queries here. You cannot run PySpark queries. Okay. So you can see the default selection is SQL now. Let me just go ahead and run this query here again. Once I do this, you can see the performance here. Again, you can see the same data. Even you can save the visualization here in notebook. You can go ahead and click on this plus button. You can click on this visualization. You can go ahead and create a visualization. Click on save and your visualization is also saved in this notebook. Okay. Now, if you don't want to use query editors, you can go ahead and use notebooks as well. But the performance remains same. Even whatever query that you run through the warehouse, again, you can go ahead and monitor this, the same query in your warehouse monitoring tab. Okay. So today you understand how you can go ahead and use SQL warehouses in order to run concurrent OLAP queries or analytical queries and how you can leverage the same Lakehouse platform in order to work with your analytical queries. You understand the benefit of warehouses and the type of warehouses that are available for you. In our next video, we are going to create a BI dashboard using different queries. Till then, keep learning, keep growing and keep sharing.